Janice, if you'll unmute, amen. Start over. God bless you. Amen. Good morning. My name is Janice Scott. Welcome to First African Methodist Episcopal Church in Kansas City. On this beautiful fifth Sunday, May the 30th, 2021, designated as Missionary Sunday, the Mary F. Candy Women's Mission Society is... Reaching outward to you virtually via Zoom and Facebook. Please connect with us in the chat and let us know where you're worshiping from. We welcome you to share any notes or thoughts in the chat that God impresses on your heart today. We found that those additions really help others connect the dots in the worship and discover, discover ways that God speaks through us, each of us. At the end of the worship, we'll place a link in the chat for you to let us know how we can help you with any next steps for your faith journey. 
As we move from Pentecost Sunday, empowered by the Holy Spirit, let us also be empowered through mission work and by the word of God. We have an opportunity in our worship today where everyone can participate vocally. Yes, you can come off mute for our scripture shout outs. We are called to be encouraged and to encourage one another through the inspiration of God's word that will bring praises, witnessing and testimony. We have missionaries that will start off in this open mic to share your favorite scripture and speaks to your soul, that sets your foundation, that brightens your day, that gives you guidance and assurance, that speaks power into your life, or that gets your heart right. As a reminder, your microphone should be on mute, and those of you willing to speak when it's your time, you will then unmute yourself. Oh, and one other note, as Kirk Franklin puts it, today is a new day. Can you smile for me? We look so much better when we smile. So smile. Lord, I come before you asking you for your permission to shadow me. Without you over me, I might lose my way. So I ask for your people to pray for me. So grateful that I'm still standing tall. I thank you for my tears. The pain helped me overcome my fears. You've been to me throughout the years. It's a miracle that I'm still standing here. And all that I am is because. Because of you, what you brought me through, and everything I survived, it's all because of you. God, I come to you right here, right now. Meet us where we are, Lord, right here. We need your spirit, Lord, fall fresh and rejuvenating God. Thank you for this opportunity just to take another breath in this lifetime. I love you, Lord, in ways that I don't even understand. We're coming to you, Lord, with gratitude and humbleness. We need you, God, and we know that you will be on time. We're leaning on your word because you said that you would, Lord. We won't worry because we have that faith the size of a mustard seed, and we know that that's enough. Lord, for those who have not confessed that you know, that they know of your grace and mercy, let it be known that they opened their eyes this morning, Lord, and they took the first awakening breath, and it was all because of you, God. God, I pray for those who can't find the words. God, I pray for those that are unsure, Lord. God, I pray for those who won't pray. Pray for those 
who are standing in the midst. I pray for your will, Lord. Now bind us to your will and your ways, God. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from me. The power and the glory, Lord, forever. And all that I am is because of what you brought me through. And everything that I survive is because of you. I thank you for it all. Amen. Good morning, First Church and family and friends. Did you know that there are 93 women who speak in the Bible? Only 49 of whom are named. These women speak just a total of 14,056 words collectively. That's only 1.1% of the total words in the Holy Book. So this morning, we're going to talk about a in the first section, we're going to talk about a few women. We wanted to, to share what they are saying in the Bible. The first one I'm going to speak about ha happens to be uh, a prophet named Huldah, who was a wife of Shalom. She lived, she was the keeper of the wardrobe. She lived in Jerusalem in the New Quarter. And this is 2 Kings chapter 22. And the verse reads, she declared to them, thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, tell the man who sent you to me, thus says the Lord, I will indeed bring disaster on this place and on its inhabitants. All the words of the book that, are the, that the king of Judah has read. Those are the words from Huldah. Morning, and I am speaking about Hagar. Please note that although she was seen only as a slave girl, a maidservant, a mistress, uh, she was looked down upon. And regardless of her background, regardless of what she's done or who she was, this is to note that everyone is seen by God. Hagar answered in Genesis 16, 13 through 16. She answered God by name, praying to the God who spoke to her. You're the God who sees me. Yes, he saw me and then I saw him. That's how that desert spring got named God alive sees me in spring. That spring is still there between Kadesh and Barak. Hagar gave Abram a son. Abram named him Ishmael. Abram was 86 years old when Hagar, Hagar gave him his son, Ishmael. Good morning, church. I'd like to speak about a woman who is not named. However, her faith, her belief, her persistence, and then Jesus's response to her expands his mission by saying that he also will help the Gentiles and not just the Jewish people. As Jesus, um, what we need to know, he was performing miracles and there was a crowd following him. But all during this time, 
the Pharisees were plotting the down, his downfall and his ultimate destruction of his human body. And so it goes. Then Jesus left Galilee and went north to the region of Tyre and Sidon. A Gentile woman who lived there came to him, pleading, have mercy on me, O Lord, son of David. For my daughter is possessed by a demon that torments her severely. But Jesus gave her no reply, not even a word. Then his disciples urged him to send her away. Tell her to go away, they said. She is bothering us with all her begging. Then Jesus said to the woman, I was sent only to help God's lost sheep, the people of Israel. But she came and worshiped him, pleading again, Lord, help me. Jesus responded, it isn't right to take food from the children and throw it to the dogs. She replied, this is her faith. That's true, Lord, but even dogs are allowed to eat the scraps that fall beneath the master's table. Dear woman, Jesus said to her, your faith is great. Your request is granted. And her daughter was instantly healed. The word of God for the people of God. Thank you. time I wake up in the morning, I got to lift my hands and, and open my mouth because you deserve my worship. You deserve my praise. If you know he deserves it, all over this room, I need about 2,500 people to just begin to open up your mouth in this place. And just begin to give God what he deserves today. You deserve my worship. You deserve, you deserve
Nobody else can have it. Nobody else can get this glory. Nobody else deserves this praise. My Father, God. Good morning, church. This is the day that the Lord hath made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. You know, we have made it five months through the year of 2021. And the scripture from Proverbs 3, 5 to 9 reads, Trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lead not unto thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy paths. Be not wise in thine own eyes, fear the Lord and depart from evil. It shall be the health to thy marrow, navel and the marrow to thy bones. Honor the Lord with thy substance and with the first fruits of thine increase. So, shall thy barns be filled with plenty and thy presses shall burst out with new wine. An old Andre Crouch song says, God opens up the windows and pours out a blessing. Today, right now, we all have the opportunity to participate in this worship service once again. God has poured blessings into our lives and now he wants you to sow a seed, pour your blessing onto someone else. And so here in our chat and on our Facebook, we will put uh, ways that you are, um, can physically give to the church to serve the ministries of First AME Church. And we are so grateful. Amen. And uh, Sister um, Danita, you are so right in, about this opportunity to give. And uh, our missionaries have been so active and so committed. And as you partner with us, we want to play a video uh, that shows all the great things that our missionaries are doing. They're active. They are uh, on, on fire for doing God's will and his way. Uh, and so as you give, you are not just giving to First Amy Church. You're giving to the work of the kingdom. And we thank our missionaries today. We're doing such a wonderful job. Uh, maybe many of you might want to sow into our ministry. You're, you're on Facebook and you're looking, uh, you're going, you know what, that, that church is doing some great things. And the, the answer is yes, we are. And we could do even greater things if you would just do what Danita said and partner with us. Amen. The Lord be praised uh, as we spotlight what our, our AME Church missionaries at this first AME Church are doing. Uh, and to God be the glory for the wonderful things he's done. As you see the appeal, please go ahead and give all over our, our um, our worship service uh, near and far that the work of the Lord might be done. Thank you, Mrs. Nita.
This is the ministry of the word. We want the word of God to go forth today. We ask God's blessing on the readers, hearers, and doers of his holy word. Help us, everyone, can be heard. Those on Zoom, you can raise your hand and shout out your scripture, have your video on or not, and unmute your microphone at the time and be a blessing to others. Those of you who are on Facebook, enter your scripture in the chat. God's word is powerful. Let's keep it flowing. If the word has touched you, it may speak volumes to someone else today. As a reminder, unmute your microphone. I would like to share a scripture. Um, oftentimes, it's easy to go to the internet when we're having a difficult time. At least I know that's what I do. Um, and you can just type in a topic and then uh, search the, the world for the answers. So um, I don't know if that makes me a lazy Christian instead of just opening up the book, but um, it, it does help when I'm, if I'm going through troubles, uh, when I am seeking God's word quickly, um, that's what I often do. Like, uh, for instance, I have started a new job. So I have prayed more in this last month <laughs> than I have in a long time because I haven't been new at a job for close to 30 years. So it's been a challenge. But the scripture that always brings it all together, whether I'm happy, whether I'm sad, whether I'm seeking guidance, whether um, um, I need strength from the Lord. Uh, the scripture that always comes to mind for me is Revelation 1.8. I am the Alpha and the Omega, says the Lord God, who is and who was and who is to come, the Almighty. So what helps me is just knowing that God is God, he is in control, and um, you know, this world is not our home, that we will be home with him one day, and that he is, is a way maker, a promise keeper, and a light in the darkness. Hey, I've got one. If y'all are ready. Um, Isaiah 41 10, one of my favorites. Uh, Fear thou not, for I am with thee. And I'm thinking life can be really hard sometimes, it, it, it can be really scary. Uh, thinking about Hannah in the Bible. Um, she went to God in bitterness of soul because she was barren. Um, that was a curse at that time. And, and Daniel, who was put into the, the lion's den, I'm thinking about the temptation he had to fear when, when they put the stone upon the mouth of the, the lion's den and then sealed it, that he would have been tempted to fear, but one thing they had established is they had established in their life the presence of God. So fear thou not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed. Don't be without strength or discouraged or depressed. Why? For I am thy God. And that God is the creator of the heavens and the earth. And there's nothing too hard for him. And it's a personal God. I am thy God. I will strengthen thee, yea, I will help thee. He comes to our aid, he sustains us, he surrounds us, he protects us, he aids us. Yea, I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. It's not ours that we depend on, it's his. So when we're going through hard things, when we're going through scary things, when we're even just having a good day, at all these times, we are in the presence of God. And when we draw nigh to him, he draws nigh to us. And we speak these things out loud. We speak praises out loud because one, it, it gives honor to God. It, it assures our hearts 
and it breaks up the, the chains of the darkness. So bless you, be in his presence. Thankful to be able to share. Good morning. My scripture is 1 John 1, 9, which states if we can we confess, if we confess our sins that he is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Uh, when the Holy Spirit pointed this out to me, you know, I was it increased my prayer life. It helped me in my prayer life. And I was able to go to a holy God and confess my sins. It says just confess them and to name them. And then he would cleanse us from all other unrighteousness, the sins that we have forgotten about. And that it says that he is a faithful God, that God is faithful to us and he will uh, continue to bless us. And even in confessing your sins, doesn't necessarily mean that you're sorry for him, you're confessing. because you know you have violated God's holy name. And so when you are confessing to sin, this, this scripture is not a license for anyone to sin. It's just a scripture that helps you uh, in your prayer life as you begin to, to name them uh, one by one. And it helps you to keep a short list of the things that you're doing with the Lord. It helps you also that you're not living a life uh, uh, filled with sin, with unconfessed sin in your life. It's not a lot you can do when you're living a life with unconfessed sin. So this scripture, it was powerful. The scripture helped me in my prayer life. And it helped me to grow in many, uh, it's important for you uh, and important for me to confess our sins to the Lord. And uh, it says that he will forgive us, that he would throw those sins into a sea of forgetfulness. Amen. Thank you. Scripture says, if you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that God raised Jesus from the dead, you will be saved. Jacqueline Sloan in our Facebook chat puts in for our hearing and consideration Psalms 23 and 1, that the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Jude is actually the shortest book in the Bible. And the scripture I'd like to share with you starts at 17. And it reads, Beloved, Remember the words which were spoken before the apostles of our Lord Jesus Christ. And it goes on to say, but ye beloved, building up yourselves on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost, keep yourself in the love of God, looking for the mercy of the Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life. And of some have compassion making a difference and others save with fear, pulling them out of the fire, hating even the garment spotted by the flesh. And our benediction now unto him who is able to keep us from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy to the only wise God, our savior, be glory, majesty, dominion, and power, but now and ever, amen. This scripture implores us 
to love one another, to be in the love of Christ that we can reach out to one another and support one another. And so we always know that there's nothing that can separate us from the love of God. And that's our encouragement that I offer you today. Sister Tierra Ming in our Facebook chat offers Joshua one and nine as part of these precious promises uh, from the word of God it says, have I not commanded you to be strong and courageous? Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged for the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. <laughs> and Leo DeMarks in our Zoom worship service, uh, Zoom format gives us Psalms 34 and eight, which says, oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. <laughs> Amen. Good morning. My scripture is Philippians 4.13. I can do all things through Jesus Christ that gives me strength. Hallelujah. And I always have when getting into situations that I think, oh, I can't do this, I can't do that, or a new uh, challenge just came over to me, I can just always remember, he doesn't put me where he doesn't need me to be. And I always know that he's going to give me that word and he's going to give me that strength to continue on to doing it. Thank you for letting me share. Be one more before we close out this part of our service. One of my favorite uh, verses is uh, from Psalms 121. And one of the, uh, when, when someone can sing this song, they've made it in a song, uh, into a song, my help. And it goes, I will lift up mine eyes unto the hills from whence cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord who made heaven and earth. He will not suffer thy foot to be moved. He that keepeth thee will not slumber. Behold, he that keepeth Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is my keeper. The Lord is the shade upon my right hand. The sun shall not smite thee by day nor the moon by night. The Lord shall preserve thee from all evil. He shall preserve thy soul. The Lord shall preserve thy going out and thy coming in from this time forth and even forevermore. Amen. Amen. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks. Be unto God. Amen. Let's put our hands together as we thank God for all of these covenants that the Lord has given us. Ah, we can stand on his word as we are empowered, as Sister Janice said, to go and serve the Lord and do the mission that he has given us. And he's given us a Holy Spirit to comfort us and to aid us and to guide us. Amen. So we are not by ourselves. Amen and amen. Sometimes 
hers I know I might say some words That might cause some hurt Sometimes I get in my own way I'm way too much to put up with You put up with it all My flaws You love, you love my flaws Think they make me beautiful You don't see them as flaws That's why, that's why, that's why I love you Cause you are, you are the one The one who loves my flaws You think I'm everything when I think I'm nothing When I hate myself, you still love me, love me And my flaws, you love, you love my flaws Think they make me beautiful You don't see them as flaws at all God. Hallelujah, God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you. Amen. The word of our God, amen, is a strong tower. Amen. And the righteous run into it. Hallelujah. And are safe. And we give God praise this morning. I could not help but to be moved, strangely moved by hearing the word of God go forth by our congregants. Amen. Because we need the word of God, don't we? And that word stands strong and it just does what and goes into places uh, where we need it. And so thank all of you, amen, that we have a living word, y'all, amen, that we can stand on uh, as to do the work of missions in our church. And I'm just so thankful today, amen, that even through our flaws, the word of God, amen, shows us where we are. Are we perfect? No, but we are striving for perfection. Look at what the Lord is doing. Amen. Even through our offering of the word of God. Amen. Somebody might be set free and moved and changed and inspired to see beyond their flaws to what the Lord can do if we come together. Amen. So God bless all of you this morning is my prayer, Sister Janice, and to all the missionaries for trusting and taking a, a risk to try something different. Amen. As we think big. Amen. I think we can, we can try this one more time to see what the Lord is going to do uh, through us. Amen. So if you see my eyes red, I just couldn't help but to cry as I thought about how many times, amen, I did not trust the word of God, didn't know the word of God, didn't, uh, could, you know, I just say somewhere in the book, but amen, the more we get into his promises, his covenant keeping promises, amen, the better we are. Amen. God bless all of you. Amen. I just want to offer just a quick word Amen. That's so fitting for this missionary day um, from the book of Mark, verse two, I mean, chapter two, verse one through five. The book of Mark, chapter two, uh, verses one through five. Um, that says, when he returned to Capernaum after some days, it was reported that he was at home. And so many gathered around there, uh, that gathered around that there was no longer room for them not even in front of the door and he, as he was, um, and he was speaking the word to them. Then some people came bringing to him a paralyzed man carried by four, four of them. And when they could not bring him to Jesus because of the crowd, they removed the roof above him. And Jesus saw their faith, I'm sorry, above them. And after having dug through it, 
they let down the mat on which the paralytic lay. And when Jesus saw their faith, he said to the paralytic, son, your sins are forgiven. Ah. <laughs> I want to preach from uh, the topic, how may I help you? <laughs> Missionaries, how, how, how may I help you? Sister Jody, just a simple question. How may I help you? I'm going to go ahead and give a provocative tagline if you don't remember anything else. <laughs> Y'all got to forgive me here. Amen. That God will empower you to get off your butt and help somebody. <laughs> Y'all got to forgive me. I asked for forgiveness before I said it. Yeah, that God will empower you, right? To get off of your do nothing. Amen. And, and actually help somebody else. You know, it's difficult at times to admit that you need help. Mm -hmm. I mean, nobody wants to appear to be weak or, or feeble or, or frail or uh, fragile or even worse, pathetic. Having to call on people too often for help can start you wondering in the back of your mind what others are actually thinking about you. For example, I probably in the back of your mind, the question is, why don't you get up and do something for yourself? <laughs> Because of our pride, Sister Danita, and for some, maybe a little stubbornness. Asking for help can be beyond our comfort zones. That's just not how some of us roll. Yeah, and even asking others for help can be difficult to do. I have to testify that I think encountering Jesus changes all of that. <laughs> there are witnesses here because when Jesus meets you and touches your life in a profound way, the focus of what it means to help and the focus of what it means uh, to, to need help shifts, or at least Dr. Sanders, it should. <laughs> and when Jesus has helped you, you're compelled to ask a different question. <laughs> Missionaries, that question is, how may I help you? Yeah, you know, I hadn't thought about this question much or how it might impact me until I took a trip with a colleague uh, to Belgium a few years ago. It was a research conference and because of international rates, I didn't have access to my cell phone and had to rely not only on my own instincts, but also the kindness of locals in the cities of Brussels and Bruges and Ghent. I had to rely on them to figure out how to get from one place to another. You know, the question of, of how may I help you seem so prevalent, so predominant during that trip. And, and since I obviously was not a local, the question was asked by staff at the hotel and workers at the conference and, uh, that I attended and guides at the airport and even people walking down the street. And I must admit that the question has prodded me ever since. The question has stirred something in me, even as I um, uh, uh, left that trip. The question just has not left me alone, even as I've come to be the pastor of First AME Church of Kansas City, Kansas, where I am coming to a new place. People have been asking me, how can we help you? <laughs> how may I help you? And that, that question is, is begging to be asked and answered for all of us who are part of, of this missionary moment, right? Because it's in the text of the Gospel of Mark. According to the text, the news spread so quickly, maybe a rumor that Jesus was in the house. Come on, y'all. <laughs> I mean, at his own house, in fact. <laughs> and, and, and his presence, his presence drew a crowd. Mm. Yeah, yeah. They are drawn to Jesus, not just for his miracles, but they're drawn to Jesus because of his word. Come on, y'all. All the, the words that we shared this morning in scripture draws people to Jesus. I'm not talking to anybody. Yeah, but, but we also, we're, we're also told something else about the crowd, or at least it's implied in this text, a problem that may not be readily apparent. Hmm. The crowd is the reason that not everyone can get to Jesus. I mean, I'm just preaching the word of God this morning, y'all. I mean, his popularity, Jesus' popularity had drawn such a crowd that the very massiveness of the people gathered created an obstacle for those who really needed a miracle. Oh, my God. Yeah. Now, that there's something funny 
uh, about crowds. Mm. Yeah, crowds in the gospel of Mark both validate Jesus and at the same time misunderstand him. Yeah, yeah here we are, uh, have a man who needs to get to Jesus, but, but cannot get to Jesus. Why? Because of the crowd. Yeah, I'm reminded of the crowd of folks who gathered a few weeks back, uh, even virtually to celebrate Easter. Y'all remember? Uh, yeah, and I wonder uh, what kind of crowd gathered and for what reason? The very gathering of the crowd in and around the house prevented a man from uh, a, a man on the outside from getting inside. Can I say that again? Just because I want to use it as a backdrop that, 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 that the, the very gathering of a crowd in and around the house prevented a man on the outside from getting inside. Yeah, I don't, I don't wanna condemn them necessarily, but, but let's, let's take a look at what makes up the crowd. For verse six informs us that some among the crowd of folks were scribes, you know, religious leaders. And, and don't, don't misunderstand that Mark doesn't say that they, they are bad people. In fact, they are probably good people. After all, they have come to hear Jesus and have such an interest in what he is saying that they crowd the house where he is. It is likely, Sister Jan, it's apparent that they are looking and hoping and expecting to gain even more insight into the scriptures that they were studying. I mean, they were scribes, they, they wrote down things, right? But this is exactly where the problem in, is in this text. Can I, can I, can I start, can point out the problem, y'all? Amen. That the very religious people inside the house, hallelujah, were, were preventing the people on the outside of the house uh, who really needed Jesus from getting to him. Okay. Uh, I don't know if I've lost anybody right there but yeah 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 the problem in the text michael is that the religious people inside the house were preventing the people on the outside uh who really need jesus to to get to him on the inside okay yeah yeah oh oh sister robinson can i uh can i really ask ourselves now if in inadvert inadvertently those of us who who are here on the inside of, uh, of the church, whether that be First Enemy Church or whatever church you go to, whatever fellowship you are part of, can we ask ourselves now that in inadvertently the, that those of us who are on the inside, are we preventing an obstacle to those on the outside who are trying and needing to get to Jesus? I'm just asking the question. Don't y'all get mad at me now. I'm just, I'm just asking the question. Could it be that all of these good, full-time, religious, theologically informed, dedicated people, just like you and me, come on, y'all, are quite unintentionally keeping people in need from getting to Jesus? Oh, God, I'm going to preach any kind of way this morning because here they are inside the house listening to Jesus. Here they are inside of the house hanging on his everywhere. Here they are on the inside. And meanwhile, on the outside, here is this paralyzed man in desperate need. Not only is it just a man in desperate need, but he has four of his desperate friends <laughs> trying to get him some help. But, 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 but they cannot get to Jesus to get the help that this man needs because uh, people like us are blocking. <laughs> Mm, don't y'all block, uh, don't, don't, you, don't you block uh, uh, people from getting to the inside. Oh my God, this is why I love Missionary Sunday because it, it pushes us, it takes us back to a place uh, where Jesus has called all of us, come on now, to take part. Now I understand why this question, how can I help you bothers me so much? Hmm? Because the purpose of those touched by Jesus' ministry is to make the insiders outsiders and the outsiders insiders, okay? I'm just going to preach any kind of way. Y'all looking at me like I'm strange. The purpose of, of us coming 
amen, to the inside of the church is to, to make us outsiders and, and the people outside inside us. Okay, okay, I may have lost somebody right there. What are you talking about? Yeah, the difficulty and trouble with much of what is called ministry. Come on, y'all. Uh, and I could suggest, amen, missionary ministry. A, uh, 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 in particular, in, 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 in the problem with it in our day is that too much of it is focused on those who are on the inside. <laughs> Yeah, insiders. Yeah. Yes, we have to take care of each other in the body of Christ. I know it because part of our goal is to stretch, right? To stretch inside to those of us who are who are who are part of the household of faith. That's part of our focus. But but if our focus is exclusively or entirely inward, preach Jason Thompson, we are we are already dying. We, we already missed the mark if, if all we focus on is ourselves. Come on, y'all. I mean, it means we are asking the wrong question. Uh, our focus should not be on taking care of each other on the inside primarily. We have to look on the outside, look at the outside and ask the outsider, how can I help you? Well, okay, I didn't got in trouble. Michael Van Ross, they don't get it. They 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 they, they scratching their heads now, right? Yeah, because our focus should not just be on taking care of us. <laughs> oh, but our focus should be not taking care of all the people on the inside, but how do we have to look on the outside and ask the outsider, how may I, may I help you? This is what I love about the video that you saw and I appeal to give is because you saw many ways where our attention, our missionary activity is not about First AMB Church, but, but, but to go to the outside and help somebody else. Okay, okay, yeah, yeah. Now, now, when I get to this point of the story, I got to go back to the question that I began. How uh, may I help you? And try to put myself in the position of the man on the mat, okay? Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm thinking what was on his mind? What was, what was in his, uh, what was his situation? How, how desperate must he have been to have a need for friends to help him get to Jesus. And, and it is easy to see how this man, this paralytic uh, could have just blended in the background and, and been entirely unnoticed. Mm, there, there is a tendency to privilege some because of their physical beauty or, or privilege some because of their athleticism or privilege some because of their intellect, privilege some because they got some coins. <laughs> And likewise, to overlook some other folks who don't who don't measure up to societal standards or, and, and or measure up to to, to 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 all of these concepts that we deem as valuable. Can you imagine what life might have been like for this paralyzed man whose condition placed him uh, in a position to constantly need? help constantly have to depend on somebody, constantly not require somebody to help him do what he cannot do for himself. But, but, but four concerned friends, maybe they were missionaries, who believed Jesus could do something about his situation, carried him to Jesus. Okay, are you listening here, y'all? Yeah, and, and these four friends, uh, when they could not get to Jesus in the ordinary or the unconventional way because of the crowd, went to extraordinary lengths and, and unconventional methods to get their friend to Jesus. Somebody ought to tell God, thank you. Yeah, yeah, because that's a model, yeah, right? Of, of how, how exceptional mm, oh, some friends can be. Oh yeah, and just as importantly, I, I, I hope I got a friend like that now. <laughs> Fortunately, yeah, the story does not end with the man on the mat being carried back home in the same condition that he came, right? Oh God, thank you. Thank you that, 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 that you can come one way, but thank God you, you, you will leave a different way. Anybody witnesses this morning? Amen. That some of us came even in worship this morning not feeling like we wanted to be here. Amen. But look like when we heard the word of God. Amen. Going forth, the scriptures of, of the beautifulness of scripture through, through, through women's voices. Amen. Scripture uh, uh, empowering us to do what we can't do in ourselves. We feel better now. Yeah. Yeah. Thankfully, he did not leave the same way he came. His friends were, were too determined to let that happen. Yeah. The crowd forced these men who were carrying the man to do something creative, unusual, do something to get Jesus to address their need. And, and, and this huge crowd had clustered around Jesus 
I'm almost done, y'all. Such as, as a great crowd that people couldn't even stand at the front door and hear what he was saying. But watch what happens in verse four. And when they could not bring him to Jesus because of the crowd, they, they removed the roof above him. And after having dug through it, they let down the mat, hallelujah, on which the paralytic lay. And, 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 and they wanted, or maybe even he wanted to get healing. Maybe he wanted deliverance or touch so badly that they literally tore the roof off. <laughs> I could preach that one day. Just tear the roof off the place, right? Yeah, the word in life study Bible uh, suggested the story is included to answer the question. Do those without position, power, health, or wealth really matter? Hmm? Yeah, do those without position power, health, or wealth really matter? And I beg to ask if this church or our community, come on, Wyandotte, uh, is better off because you're here. <laughs> yeah. Are we better off because of the work we're doing? Mm. This is why we don't need y'all just to sit, amen, on the pews. God ain't never called nobody to pew ministry. Come on here. <laughs> yeah, he, he's, he's just never called us to pew ministry. Well, you say, look, I served my time now. As long as you're here, there's still something for us to do. Yeah, when I used to work with the choir, I had some members in the audience say, well, uh, y'all sound so good. I don't think we need, I didn't know if y'all wanted me up there. Oh, yes, we do. Yeah, we need everybody, don't we, Jody? We need everybody. Yeah, wherever, wherever the Lord has called you, we need you because what at the end of the day, we want a difference and impact to happen because we are here. Mm, now, let's, let's try to answer the question we posed at the beginning of the sermon. How can I help you? What we can learn for, about others uh, through the story and the people within it. I'm going to give you three short things and just write them down. The first thing that they was unified. Mm, this is where I become pastoral. They were unified. <laughs> because we can do more together, come on, y'all, than by ourselves. Mm -hmm. Yeah, four, four, four people uh, can carry something easier than one person by themselves. Yeah, you, you, can, you can only lift somebody uh, by yourself for so long. Are y'all listening to me? <laughs> That's why we need to, you to be a part of the church because the church could use your help. <laughs> I don't know if they need any more money. Oh, yes, we do. I don't know if they need anybody else to serve. Oh, yes, we do. <laughs> yeah, because when you're unified, we can do more together than by ourselves. Uh, in this postmodern society, church has turned from a place of helping others to a place where people are trying to get something for themselves. Mm. Yeah, we, we church shop uh, in this virtual moment yeah, to the point that the focus is no longer on others, but on ourselves, yeah, yeah, yeah. Is there a daycare at First Amy Church? No, but you can start one. Yeah, is there a singles ministry? No, not yet. But with your help, we can have one. Okay. Oh, I'm I'm, I'm messing now, y'all. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. What am I saying? That these four people helping the man have nothing to gain. <laughs> but everything to lose, right? Because I suggest that these four uh, helpers in the text represent a unified church. Y'all see that? Uh -huh. I mean, they were unified in helping this man. I mean, what if these four, uh, uh, four, four helpers represented four separate churches? Because, you know, we claim to be a, a connectional church. Oh my God, I'm gonna get in so much trouble. I mean, what if what if these four helpers represented four separate churches? I mean, how much more could we do for our community and to address social issues if all of our churches, I ain't talking about just all the AME churches, I'm talking about all of our churches in Wyandotte came together to be more unified. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. Okay, I'm gonna push on because I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm just giving a couple of remarks. That's all I'm doing here. Not only were they unified, but they were orderly. You know, what I love about, about adults uh, because adults always love to tell me, you know, I like to be organized. They say that, but then they still lay on stuff. I'm going to let that sit in for a moment. I'm going to let that sit in more, for a moment. They, they, you know, we love saying, you know, I like to have my stuff together. Okay. We love saying that. 
But, but, but the question is, and what this text asks us is how orderly are we? I mean, everybody can't carry at the same point, can they? Hmm? I mean, somebody has to carry the head. Somebody has to carry the feet. <laughs> somebody got to offer some back support. But how often do we spend time arguing about who's going to be in charge of the head that, that we end up dropping the person and they don't get the help they need? Oh, gosh. My gosh. Oh, help us, God, uh, to put our mindset of the person that's, that's, that, that, that we have been lifting up. <laughs> that's sitting there saying, listen, whatever you do, don't drop me. Are y'all hearing me? Whatever you do, don't, don't, don't you drop me. Mm. I mean, how many things have we started? I mean, great ideas. Oh, just to drop the idea in the plan. Mm. I mean, I mean, you don't, don't, don't you drop the idea. Don't, dro don't drop the ball. Come on, y'all. I mean, yeah, we can feed families at Christmas time and then drop them from our memories the rest of the year. <laughs> Come on, y'all. Don't, don't, don't drop me now. Don't, don't, don't drop the, 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 the let's be so orderly that, that we follow through on what we said, right? And, and can I just tell you about this organization that they, they or, what they organized to do was probably difficult. Hmm? I mean, it's not easy to carry the man on, on the roof. I mean, it's a difficult task. The Bible says that what Jesus saw, their faith, and faith is something that works in the heart, and then it works its way to the outside. <laughs> oh, my God. I mean, a faith that won't put you to work for Jesus ain't a faith worth having. This is how orderly we are. That Our faith allows us, we so orderly, to do what's difficult, but to do what is unusual. I mean, they were willing to think outside the box. For them, it was not business as usual. But it took ingenuity to think of breaking the roof to get the man to Jesus. Huh. Can you even imagine maybe that the orderliness of what they were doing, that they had to say, maybe this is going to cost us something. <laughs> I mean, they may have to pay the cost of the repairs to Peter's roof. <laughs> I mean, but they were organized to do whatever it took to help somebody else. Mm. The same heart ought to beat in us, shouldn't it? I mean, as long as it's biblical, we shouldn't shy away from doing what it's going to take to, to connect people on the outside to a God on the inside. <laughs> oh, but finally, not only were they, were they um, orderly, not only, praise the Lord, were they unified. Just a simple word, y'all, today. But they were determined. I mean, they, they were determined when we, we got to be more determined now to help than ever before. Mm -hmm. I mean, here these people were with probably scuffed knees, but they were determined. With tired arms, but they were determined. <laughs> tired legs, well, let me say sore legs, <laughs> uh, but they were determined because sometimes you wonder if things you have to encounter are worth the effort. Anybody been there with me where you go, I don't even know if I want to get involved. Oh, but sometimes we've got to, amen, be on the verge of giving up to understand what it means to stick and stay and to be determined to help somebody else. But, but when you get determined to help somebody else, can y'all know that God will lift you up to do what you can't do by yourself? Oh my God, I've seen it every time. So here they were, they, they were determined to, 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 to they, they, um, they took the paralyzed man on the roof of the house, broke up the roof and lowered their friend down to Jesus through the hole mm, in the roof. I mean, houses in that day usually had one or two types of roof. First consisted of beams covered with crisscrossing sticks, and the wooden foundation uh, was then covered with uh, clay tiles, which was turned, uh, which in turn covered uh, with more clay, and finally grass was placed on the top. I mean, the other type of the roof was covered with overlapping clay tiles. These roofs were accessible via a stairway on the side of the house. Either way, y'all watch this to get this man to Jesus. They had to dig through the layers of the roof to get the clay out the way. Mm, are you listening? <laughs> oh, my God. When they did this, they, they, their friend experienced the grace of God that resulted in the forgiveness of his sins and the healing of his body. But none of this would have happened. Watch this, y'all. Had they not gotten the clay out the way. Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm talking to somebody. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. The clay out the way. When you are determined, amen, to get the clay out of the way. Watch this, y'all. Jesus becomes more discernible. Mm -hmm. I mean, think about this. I mean, as they stood on the roof, the voice of Jesus was dimmed and his face was hidden from view. But when the clay was removed, I hope y'all hear me in the spirit here, y'all. They could look on him. Yo, watch this, y'all. That, that, that nothing hides the lovely face of our Savior from view uh, any more than our old stinking ways. Come on, y'all. Yeah, all the clay that's been in the way, our attitudes, uh, our actions, our, our affections, our fears, our failures, our foolishness, our, our sins, our shortcomings, our still, our silliness, all hide his face and distinguish his voice. But, but our greeds and our grudges and our hurts and our hates, our, our worries and our wonderings all stand as clay in the way from us. Praise the Lord, seeing his glory. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Don't you know that nothing hinders your walk, your, 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 your ability to help somebody else like you do? <laughs> oh, yeah. Hallelujah. But, but when all the clay of this flesh is, 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 is uncovered, that, that is seen for what it is. And when it's broken up, am I talking to anybody uh, that is humbled before God in repentance? The wall that's separating us between the God that we need comes down. Oh, God, I pray today, amen, that, that whatever's been clouding us, whatever's been clay in the way, would get out the way so we can help somebody for real. Y'all don't even know what to say, amen. Mm, yeah, 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 I love that, amen, that not only does, amen, they're so determined to the point where, where, where Jesus becomes more discernment, discernible. Watch this, y'all. Yeah, but, but when, when you are determined to help somebody and you get the clay out the way, not only does he become more discernible, but he becomes more desirable. <laughs> okay, I can't even sit still now. Woo! Yeah, yeah, he becomes more desirable. Yeah, that when the clay of the roof was removed, they could see Jesus and the object of their desire become more desirable. Yeah, can I make a note right here that when we get before him and get the clay out the way in our lives because we're trying to help somebody, amen, business will pick up. Are you listening to me, y'all? Yeah, when he is seen in his right position, yeah, yeah, he becomes more desirable. Whew. I wonder what would happen if, if we would catch on fire, Sister Janice, to do missionary work. What would, what would happen if we, we said, Lord, we want to help somebody, and, and that, that the more we, we, we take uh, and, and get the, the, the clay out of our own eyes and get help somebody else get the clay out of their eyes, not only does Jesus become discernible, we can see him finally, but he becomes more desirable. <laughs> oh, Lord, we want to help somebody today to, 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 to see a discerning Jesus, or to, to discern Jesus, and also to desire him. Yeah, because, you know, well, uh, everything in my life changes since Jesus, right, came into my life. What a, what a wonderful change in my life has been wrought since Jesus became more discernible, <laughs> since Jesus became more desirable. Yeah, yeah, I wonder if there are people who are watching, I'm done now, or, or living in a place and in such a way uh, this morning where you can see them for yourself. Do you have people uh, uh, that are helping you to get the clay out the way? Mm. As you try to say, may I help you? So that Jesus can become more visible and more desirable. Mm. I want to end by saying that, that, that the best thing about whenever we, we help somebody get lowered into the presence of the Lord is that it's in his presence that, that you can discharge your burdens. I mean, that mat that, that was carrying you, you can now carry it. Come on, y'all. Yeah, 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 yeah. What does it mean that we, we let people in their paralyzed state down at the very feet of Jesus? Whew. Yeah, that they were able to give him their burdens. Yeah, the same is true for all of us. As long as, as we are laying on the mat, as long as we got the clay of sin in our lives, Michael said it as part of his scripture sharing, that we can't get to him like we need to. Oh, but when we help somebody else, we're actually helping ourselves to discharge our burdens. Uh, uh, and, and can I tell you, here's the blessing in the text, y'all. Not only do you discharge whatever is burdening you, yeah, 
but you discharge the burden and you discover the blessing. Oh my God. <laughs> oh my God. Y'all see it right there. Jesus looks up and sees these men and what they have done to get their friend, to help their friend, and he commends them. And on the basis of their faith, y'all, he heals the paralyzed man. Oh, help me, God. Yeah, did you know that God cannot bless your life like he wants to bless your life until you get the clay out the way? Oh. Woo! Thank you, God. Help me, God. Until your flesh and mind is dealt with, we can't, we can't even see revival. We can't help nobody until we help get it out. Oh, but, but this is what I love about it, that, that you can discharge your, um, discharge your burdens. Mm. Uh, and discover your blessing that God is ready to heal. God is ready to move. God is ready to do something. Father, we stretch what? Our hands to thee. No, no other help we know. <laughs> and in helping somebody, they might get the blessings that they need. That they, they need. Mm, the word of God, y'all. For the people of God. Mm, how, how can I help you? <laughs> that's, the, that's the question. How can I help you? I got to help you to, 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 to uh, discharge the burdens this morning to the point where God can then help us discover our blessings. It's a songwriter that said, count your many blessings. Do what, y'all? Name them one by one. Count your many blessings and see what the Lord... <laughs> That's done. I don't know about you, but I feel empowered now to serve. Empowered to, to try something different. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. He gave me my hands to reach out to man. Show him your love. And what else? And your perfect plan gave me my ears. I can hear your voice so clear. I see hearts that have been broken. So many people to be free. Mm. to you anybody available where you want the Lord to use you <clears throat> my will I give to you I'll do what you say do use me Lord why to show someone the way is that our witness today is that our plan enable me to say this is where I lift my own hands to say my storage is empty mm. and I am available to you. Well, listen, we want to give you an opportunity to, to accept the Lord Jesus Christ and be available to be used. That's what a disciple is. And let me tell you, the First Amy Church is no longer accepting new members. Sorry, we don't want any new members. We want disciples. And if you want to be a disciple of the Lord Jesus Christ, we welcome you and welcome with open arms to be a part of a body of Christ, to be more like Jesus, to join Jesus in helping someone else. And I tell you, you can't ask for a better church that's going to love on you, a church that's going to help you, assist you to do the work of ministry. And our missionaries are standing, waiting and willing to partner with you to help you to get back on track. Or maybe you say, I've never accepted the Lord Jesus before. This missionary study, you can get started. Let me tell you, I love the options of coming to the Lord Jesus. You can get off the sidelines and be a part of the game. We call that First Enemy Church. We are, we are dedicated to doing the Lord's work. We've been doing this for 162 years. And can I tell you, the Lord is not done with us yet. Hallelujah. And so we welcome you already. If you've been looking for a church, let me tell you, this is the place for you. Maybe you pray today. As we put in our chat, opportunities for you to join, be connected, or maybe we can connect with you. Amen. Uh, Sister Janice said it at the beginning that we'll give you an opportunity to connect with us. 
and we can connect with you. Maybe you're looking for a place to grow or to, to, uh, to, to work through your problems or, or looking for places where you and your children can be uh, at home. Let me tell you, we want you to consider the first AME Church of Kansas City, Kansas as that place. Are we perfect? No. Amen. But we are striving for perfection, striving to get better. Come and grow with us. Come and be a part of a fellowship of believers, those who want to make Jesus their Lord and their Savior. And can I tell you, if you do that, guess what happens? You won't be the same. Are there witnesses here in our first Amy Church Zoom that are not the same? When you call on Jesus, things in your life change. Things in your life will not be the same. Are there witnesses that can testify that it, it, the road may not be easy, but it's worth the uh, it's worth the, the journey? Hallelujah. Amen. Amen, amen, and amen. Hallelujah. Thank you. Let's pray. Father, maybe somebody is making a decision this morning to accept you as Lord and Savior. They are struggling now for the help that they need. Remove pride. Remove uh, whatever is standing in the, their way from seeing you. The clay out of our eyes. Uh, so that you might get the glory. We might see you. You might be more discernible. We might discover you for who you are, God. Thank you now for missionary work that drives what we should be doing. That we won't be so insular, a social club, that we don't stretch out to the needs of our community, God. We thank you in advance that you're stirring up in us right now a chance to help. Not to hurt, but to help. Right now, I'm praying for somebody that's struggling with church hurt. Someone who says that they talked about me, they lied on me. Would you heal them? wherever they are, God, and recognize that we don't do things for man, but we do things for you. Heal our, our, our hurt. Heal our church hurt. Things that may have been said unintentionally, but they, they, they still hurt. Or things that were said like a viper, like a snake bite, and it hurt us to the core, God. But let us not let, let us not be, be, be stuck on those places, but God, to really find ourselves moving in you. We give you praise and we give you glory for in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Well, I tell you, what a great time we've had. Sister Janice, would you come and just have a couple words uh, for our missionaries and uh, thanking the people who've been watching online and we'll go straight from there to our missionary benediction. Amen. What a wonderful time we've had today. Thank you all of our missionaries for daring to do something different. And now we are certainly, amen, going to hear from our um, Sister Janice Scott. Amen at this time. Thank you. We're all our missionaries. It's just not a member of the Mary F. Handy Missionary Society or members here at the First AME. We all have mission work to do for the Lord. So I just thank everyone for participating with this service, joining us Lord, on this fifth Sunday. Without you, we wouldn't be here today. So I just thank you all and be empowered to move outside from yourself and help someone else. Thank you. Amen. And Amen. Amen. Thanks to all of you who are participants in our worship service. The Lord be praised. Amen. Well, in our, if you're not familiar with our, our denomination, we have a beautiful benediction that we give on a missionary Sunday. You see the words that about the end, the name of the trying God and then the spirit of Christian missions that we do what we enter, that, that, that enter every heart. And that's what we ask in Jesus name. And so let's sing it all over this place as we have our benediction. God bless you. We'll see you next week. We ask in Jesus' name. And all the people of God said together.